line, was through his hands. It's loose and picked up by the Buffaloes and running the other direction. Here we go. 35-30, 25-20, 15-10, 5, touchdown. Colorado, Kendrick Greenlove, it's a two-point conversion going the other direction. Well, that's a play you don't see very often. In fact, Buffalo's fans haven't seen that since 1991. A two-point defensive conversion. Then it was Greg Beekert, Kendrick Breedlove does this one as the Buffaloes at that point had five points. Looked like a baseball score at one point, in fact. We continue to Buffalo Stampede, voice of the boss, Mark Johnson. Uh, Buff's great, Super Bowl champion with the Denver Broncos. Uh, Tyler Columbus uh, joining us. He was in the booth because Gary was out sick for this one. Well, first off, did you have fun doing this? You know, I uh, wish we had a better outcome, but right, I'm grateful right. you uh, picked up the phone and called my name. Uh, <laughs> I had a great time calling the game, but boy, that was a uh, just a slow game, yeah. a sleepy game. They finally woke up in the fourth quarter there. There. Unfortunately, it's just a little too little too late. You know, you said during our radio pregame, we were talking about this matchup, and you said something about Oregon State. You said they run a pro-style offense. They don't do anything spectacular. There's nothing flashy about it on the defensive side of the same way. They kind of lull you a little bit, don't they? They do. They're one of those teams that, well, I think any team that likes to emphasize the run, they kind of lull you to sleep, just generally speaking. But Oregon State, they're one of those teams that you, you don't see any flash. There's hardly any big plays. And then you blink your eye, and oftentimes they're up by three scores. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what happened here tonight as well. And they don't hurt themselves ever. And for the Buffaloes, we kind of kept playing into their hands a little bit, didn't we? Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and he couldn't – I thought the defense actually had a respect. They did a respectable job yeah. out there. Um, you know, unfortunately, at the end of the game, you choose to not have the onside kick uh, in a four-minute drill. That's tough living for an offense. It's tough living for a defense. Uh, you just couldn't quite get off at the key moments. Uh, but I did think the, the the Buffs defense overall respectable. There was so much talk about the Colorado offensive line going into this one, coaching changes. You played that position for a long time, did in the NFL for eight years. What did you see up front from Colorado? Yeah, couldn't run the ball. No. Um, Change the play callers, uh, but you, you only got the hogs that you got, and they're going to have to find ways to pass the ball quickly, one step, no hitch throws, uh, because the running game, it's probably too late in the season to expect much to be different. Yeah, you're not going to make that kind of change, you know, midstream as we are now with three games remaining. After the Buffs lost to the Beavers, we heard from a number of players in the postgame press conference. I mean, it's one thing that you can't, you can't stop losing faith with everything. Uh, just in life, everything's not going to work out how you want it to be. So you just got to remain, just staying positive and stay. Not really having no negativity towards the situation because it's not going to help anything. This is the situation we're in, so we got to accept that and move forward. Really understand what they're doing, their pros and cons early. That's really what it is instead of, you know, waiting, waiting till the second half. But understanding what they're good at and understanding their weaknesses, understanding their voids, understanding the players, how they, what type of drops are they taking? Are they taking vertical drops? Are they taking horizontal drops? Like, it, it's, it's a lot of stuff and a lot of details that you can't just base off a of film or watch. You gotta get in the game and understand, okay, this is how this player moves, this is how this player moves, and this is how this guy drops, this what this guy looking at. So it's a, y'all don't really understand the details and everything that really goes into this game. Y'all just see, you know, throw it to an open guy and it's just not that simple all the time. This weekend, you got Arizona coming to town. They've been red hot, as you mentioned. They won 27 to 10 over UCLA. Your senior day. Buffs yeah. are going to have a senior day. I, I know you cried. I remember that when you <laughs> played. I was doing the ball games back then. That, that's always an interesting day for the guys in their final home game. Oh, yeah. A lot of emotion went into that one. I had a pretty cool walk off. Uh, we, we were playing Nebraska. Mark, you probably remember the final score. It was 60, uh, 65, 53, something 51, like that. Yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah. It really wasn't as close as, the, as it sounded. Uh, Nebraska got a couple uh, cheap scores there at the very yep. end. But to be able to walk out for me against Nebraska with a victory, so much emotion. And I remember going into that game just sitting in my locker trying to not to feel the emotion of it, but knowing that that's the last time I was ever going to go and get to play on Folsom Field grass. 
lot goes into that one. It's amazing. You get here as a freshman, and I, I see these young men walk in here, and they think, I've got a lifetime before my last game, and in a blink of an eye, it's over. Yes, it is. Yeah, And then they end up as old as this guy is. <laughs> With gray hair. It's, it's yeah. unbelievable. Tyler Columbus buffs great as the buffs fall 26-19 to to the 16th-rated Beavers of Oregon State. And that'll wrap up the Buffalo Stampede. Don't forget, we got Friday night basketball. The men against Grambling State will hit the air at 5.30 tip-off at 6. And then on Saturday, we've got football. The final home game is Arizona's in town. 10 a.m. with the pregame, 12 noon with the kickout between the Buffs and the Wildcats. Thanks for joining us. I'm Voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you.